Alright, so you guys know I love cameras. I'm a professional photographer, so I have my A7R4, I have my RX100 Mark III for photos, I have my GoPro 9 for vlogging and videos, I have my Insta 360 ONE R for 360 degree shot, and I have my phone for quick snaps and fast social media posts. But I feel with all those cameras, I'm just missing one more to my quiver. And that is exactly what we're going to find out today, if the Insta360 GO 2 can be the missing camera to my arsenal. Hey what's up guys, my name is Charles and welcome back to my cycling YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a deep look at the Insta360 GO 2. This camera is special because first of all, it's so small. Second of all, it's so easy to mount anywhere. Third of all, the quality is supposedly extremely good. Fourth of all, the integration with social media is super easy with your phone to transfer footage. And there's a lot to talk about this camera. I'm super excited to unbox it, mount it on my bikes, and just take this for a spin and see if this can replace my GoPro 9 as my go-to camera for YouTube vlogging action shots, racing. This camera has a lot of potential. Let's dive into it. Well, I wanna say I had the Go 1 and it was one of the most fun camera I ever had just because of its form factor. This is 20 grams. I can mount it anywhere on my bike. I can have it on my chest using a necklace. Uh, the quality of the Go 1 was great. Not that much, but it's supposedly highly improved with the Go 2, so I'm super excited to test it out. Some of its key features are really well received. We got flow state stabilization and free mount anywhere with magnets, 1440p at 50 FPS, waterproof, auto editing, IP lapse, slow motion, remote control, and Wi Fi preview. That is a lot of features, and we gotta see if this is good for any cyclist now. Let's just unbox the 360 Go 2 and let's take it for a spin. And there it is. Wow, this is so small. Can't believe it. And as we see here on the unboxing, it shows one of its best features of the Go 2 is the magnet. So you can easily mount this anywhere and it's supposedly super strong. So a big upgrade with the Go 2 is the charging case, which is also have functionality now. So uh, we can see, we can start recording. It's also a mini tripod as well. We can send this on desk or we can just use it as a vlogging stick. It's easier, you can press record. Now what's next in the box is some additional mounts. So we have this one is for a cap. And here's basically all the pendant work. So you put it under your shirt and you can easily put on the camera. And it's, now it's maybe a little bit low, but you can snap it in there. And if I have, let's say this on my cap, you guys know I often wear my cap. I can snap it in there. There we go. And now I can get some headshots using the camera. All right, so this is a test going 34 kilometers an hour. I hope the audio is good. So the funny thing is today, we came here about an hour out of Montreal to ride our bikes, and Gabrielle took two Vapor S, so my Vapor S and her Vapor S. Oh. <laughs> And the same foot as well, so I was completely sleeping at this point. <laughs> but now my mom lent me yeah. her shoes for the day. But now at least she can ride today. So we are the next day because yesterday actually I ran out of battery back today on the bike again doing some ill repeats with Gab. Good morning. Gabrielle's having the best time of her life right now. Just a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> we're just climbing here at Mini Hood until we're tired or bored. Which will take a long time. Or sick. <laughs> or sick, yeah. <laughs> Wow. I slept. Woo. That was 
sweat effort. Thanks, Nick. Hey, no problem, man. That's <laughs> with the boys. We're climbing Clark, one of the steepest in Montreal. Yeah, small boys. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, so we are on repeat number three of Clark. Nick, we say we we're gonna do six. It's gonna hurt for sure. All right guys, so it's now been a full week. I've been using the Insta360 GO 2 and I gotta say, I am fairly impressed. There are some drawbacks that I'm going to discuss further in this video, but let's start with everything I love about it. So first of all, man, that form factor, that weight, it just makes it easy to get the shot. You can always have it with you. You basically feel like you don't have a camera and I just love the fact that it's just so simple to start recording and it's just with the press of a button and here we go I'm capturing everything in both vertical and horizontal as well which is so nice for me as a youtuber but I also want this content to be used for Instagram so I can recrop it later and have it vertical for reels for stories so it just really gives me a lot more flexibility as a content creator another ally that I love it is just snap to anything either I have this GoPro style mount on my handlebar I can just pop it in or let's say I can take it off while riding and then put it onto the pendant which is on my chest and then like hey I take it out with one hand I get a few shots of my buddy riding next to me and I can quickly just throw the camera back on my chest and it's hands free this just make it easier on the fly I can snap videos get it back to the pendant and keep riding I am also genuinely surprised about the stabilization of this camera with their flow state stabilization butter smooth even if I'm like shaking trying to hold my handlebar with one hand and the camera on the other hand who likes to watch shaky footage but with all these amazing features it also comes with drawbacks which some are pretty freaking annoying so because of its small form factor the battery doesn't last that long I've pretty much ran out of battery every time I used it so something now I've realized over the week is in between shots let's say we're going from this one spot to the other I need to put it back into this charging case just to give it a little bit more battery so it can last more all day. And just for some comparison here with my GoPro 9, so the battery of the 9 is insanely good. It lasts so long, but look at this big size and look at the size of that camera. Basically, the, the GoPro battery weighs as much as the whole Insta360 GO 2, basically the same size. So you can expect this one to last a lot longer than this, but more weight smaller size form factor I am carrying the charging case no matter what in my rear pockets but I just need to think about putting the camera back in which is not that big of a deal when using the pendant or using the regular one because I can just snap it out and snap it in there but when using the other mount which is a little bit more secure here uh, this one really holds the camera in like with GoPro style uh, if I want to charge the camera I really need to take off the little screw here take everything out and then so just a little bit more of a hassle to do and you speaking of using this mount I highly recommend it because as you saw in that video uh, one time the camera was on the ground well I was using just this regular one so it was just simply magnet in there it was and it did fail uh, when there was too much vibration the camera popped off and I had to do a u-turn get it back good thing no cars ran onto that camera but yeah, so after that, I started to use the this one, which really like there's no way the camera will be lost. But the trade-off is it's a bit more annoying to charge or just to put a dependent here. Something else I don't quite like is the LED indication if you're filming is so small and during bright daylight, it's also difficult to see if you are filming and it's the button is also so easy to hit by accident and then you start filming for five or 10 minutes or 30 minutes, as long as you put the setting on. And this leads for me to have a reduced battery life because I was filming by accident without knowing, without realizing it was just getting pointless footage, uh, which I kind of make it look good. I speed it up and it looked like we're climbing the whole thing, but that was an accident because it just started filming for 10 minutes without me knowing. Uh, 
Uh, so one thing I would really love to see is at least have maybe a light on the bike side of it. So when the camera is facing forward on the bike, I can see if I'm filming. Uh, not only need to look on the front side. And so the button's great, but maybe like a on off switch could be great as well on the side. Uh, so I can really know like, yeah, it's on off or it's on on. A physical button there that would have been really helpful because yeah, just that pressing button action it's so easy to do by accident. And now coming to my last thing that I don't like about the GoTo and it's this whole mobile editing workflow. It works, the mobile app works, it's great. Uh, you can see the footage, you can transfer it, but I think it might just be me, but this whole uh, mentality of editing on a phone just sucks so much. It takes literally five times longer to do than to do on a computer. And that's maybe me who's a bit old school uh, with editing. I'm really fast with the computer. I've tried to do it with my phone. And just to do this little one minute reel, probably took me like an hour and a half. So lots of steps. So you need to transfer the footage from the go-to to your phone or at least review it from your phone. And then you can crop it, you select what you want to import, and then you import all the footage from the go-to, like raw, to your phone. But then, from your phone, you need to export that to like a MP4 to be saved into your gallery. And then from there, you have to use, let's say, IG Reels to import that footage that you've exported twice. And it's just like taking forever. And I don't know if it's just because I'm using an Android phone, but it was so buggy. I had to restart Instagram like three times when doing the reel and it was bugging, it was slow, it was spinning in circles. And I finished that reel, but it sucked. If I would have jumped on my computer right away, I feel it's a lot more efficient than using the phone. Um, so for me, I might still try again with the phone, but the computer is just a better way to go. But now my final opinion, if you should or shouldn't get the go-to. Well, I feel it's all about your needs. Uh, if you only need action shots and you don't need to talk to the camera or vlog about it, uh, the go-to is the perfect camera for it. It captures everything easily without any asshole and it's free most of the time. It gets beautiful image. The audio quality is just okay when we're moving at speed as we saw into this video. Uh, not as good, of course, than the GoPro with the GoPro mic, the audio mod, but that's like a, such a bigger form factor. But yeah, I'm quite happy with what I get in here. I will keep using this camera for future videos, but at the price of $399, it's kind of expensive. I would have loved to see it a bit more affordable. I think the Go One was in that low $200 Canadian which I bought a couple years ago. I'm gonna put my receipt right there. I do feel it's a little bit on the expensive side, but you do get some features that you cannot get with any other camera on the market. But if you wanna put your hands on the Go2, I'm sure you will not regret it. Uh, there will be a link in the description down below, which will give you a discount because there is currently a big sale going on at Insta360. It ends in less than a week, so hurry up if you wanna get your hands on one because this discount will not last forever. But as I always mention, I do receive a kickback from that sales. It fronts this YouTube channel for me to become a full-time cyclist, so thank you. All right, if you enjoyed this though, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already, and my name is Charles, and I will see you guys on the road or into the next video. Peace.